So the thing uh, leaves my mouth and I'm like, I, I start, I'm like, oh, oh no, this is bad. You hear the river water, you start to panic. So I stood up. And so now, the, you know, it hits you and you're kind of, you're starting to lose your, your control and you start to freak out. And just knowing that I couldn't stand up and I was trying to run, I couldn't really do anything. So I started to really panic. I started to scream. I started to yell. And when Underwater. People, underwater. <laughs> I was just yelling. And it's like, I had so much trouble even for weeks talking about this. But now it's like, I talk about it so much. I'm like, I laugh about it now. Because it's just like typical me to go do something as stupid as that. This is Pioneer Polly, the most popular YouTube prospector, I would say, or if not the most, like number two, maybe. The most, the weirdest one, the one that makes the least amount of sense. The one that makes <laughs> you laugh the most, I would say. The Definitely. least serious one. channel but pioneer poly that's a great channel He's that guy one. takes the cake yeah. yeah no that's funny um for those of you guys who don't know we are at the gpaa golden treasure show in uh, portland oregon and we're act the whole show is actually all behind us so if there is a little bit of noise kind of sparkling in the distance that's perfect example <laughs> it's gonna happen especially because they're announcing a new speaker at 1 30 so the pa is uh the gpaa just announcing uh, new stuff that's going on. A lot of speakers. Pioneer, you got to Pioneer Polly. I'm just going to call you Polly. Yeah, yeah Pioneer, no, Polly. that's fine with me. All right, Polly. Call me uh, Dave. Call you Dave. <laughs> There's a lot of Dave's on the show. There's a lot of Dave's. All right. Some people know it. A lot of people probably don't. How how did you get to almost 300,000 subscribers just going out prospecting? How did it start for Pioneer Polly and how long ago did it start? Um, I, I started about, I started my YouTube channel, I guess. 12 maybe coming on 13 years ago now and it was me just strictly looking for artifacts it was actually under a different name it was called artifact stream like extreme artifacts and uh, i did a lot of those arrowhead hunting videos and looking for you know artifacts then i got in trouble for looking for them because um you're not supposed to look for them in bc sure you know you're not like you're just taking uh, the first nations stuff right and I didn't know this at the time. And all the videos that inspired me to do all that were all coming from the U.S. And from Canada and the U.S., there's a completely different set of rules. So anyway, so that's how I started it. And then I got in trouble, but I still wanted to film and make videos because I, I knew I was good at that. Um, but during all this time, I was going through anxiety and depression and eating disorders. I was homeschooled and I have what's called agrophobia. So it's the opposite of um, claustrophobia. Oh, wow. Yeah, so if you're afraid of being inside, like, in a little a little space, I'm afraid of open spaces. And this all happened. I don't know why. I don't know what triggered it, but it's. I can still go out and do that stuff. I've been into the middle of Arizona looking for gold and stuff, and I can handle it with a few anxiety attacks and whatnot, right? Wow. Yeah, so interesting. Okay, so, like, you're on a river, lots of trees. That's different from Arizona because you feel like there's stuff around you? Yeah, I feel more... It's like I'm being hugged by nature. Okay. Rather like like for me like being out there I can be like okay at least I can like I can hide it's just psychological like you'd think that being in a forest you'd get lost you right. know and it's more scary than being in a field where you can be seen. Right. But I feel like in a field I can physically see how far away I am from my comfort zone. If that makes sense. Yep. From like a car yep. or from like my own my own bed or something like that. Right. Like if I'm like miles into the middle of a desert it's like that's more scary because if something were to happen you're still stuck in the desert like sure. you you can't go lay in your blanket or something like that. Right. right. But, Right. Okay. Now you mentioned depression, anxiety, and in that same group, you said homeschool. What homeschool? Sorry. Good I'm, or I'm bad? I'm going to be firing left, right, and center because no, 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 no. ADHD. I'm That's gonna go good. <laughs> the homeschool was a good expense or a bad expense? Uh, it was good in the sense that it was from my own home. And it was bad as like I just didn't take it seriously. Like okay. my teacher was like 300 years old, and he was like just drooling on the work and like like 
I love the guy, you know, um, but sure. it was a weird experience. And like my family seeing them, like my two sisters and my two brothers and stuff, they would be with me and uh, they would be going to these normal schools and I'd be sitting in the living room like by myself, you know, I grew up my hair. I was just, cause I was just afraid of going outside. Like I just developed this from my first panic attack while riding my bike. Wow. That's, I think, yeah, I think that's what triggered my anxiety and such. But so to answer the very, the first question, like how long I've been doing this, started the YouTube channel about 13 years ago. Um, it really started from when I was stuck inside my home like that, I would be filming videos, me walking around the house, just doing pulling pranks on my mom and, and all that sort of stuff. So I got used to the camera that way. And then I opened the channel as I started to go outside more looking for artifacts and arrowheads and all that sort of stuff. And then after I got in trouble with the government from looking for this stuff, I was still wanting to make videos of something. And during all this time, my cousin Kenny was always bugging me to go ghoul panning. Okay. I'm like, yeah, right. I don't have to go ghoul panning. That's such an old fashioned weird thing to do. Right. Like, no, so I'm not going to go. But then he kept bugging me and eventually I did go. I found my first piece of gold and then from there I'd be taking stealing his gold pans and I would just be going every single day to the one spot he showed me looking for gold and since I was filming Arrowhead videos I was like you know what I'll, I'll film this gold panning video nice. so I did a couple of those and they were doing okay got better criticism than I did looking for Arrowheads sure. there's a bigger fan base I suppose turns and then, out a lot of people like gold prospecting yeah, videos yeah and then on top of that I'm just weird you know, weird and quirky and I'm just doing ridiculous things. And it's not just because I'm I'm purposely doing them. It's just, that's just, I'm like that normally. Right. Just awkward and weird. Right, right. So people fell, fell in love with that. And then from there, it just slowly took off. And now it's like, here I am at this GPA show with an invite to talk to all these people with a, you know, hour and a half session each day. It's just weird. Yeah. Cause you, you know, it's no, like you film yourself cool. all the time and now you get to see the other side of that. And yeah. you get to see all the people that helped you, help, help lift you up. And it's, nice helps your anxiety and depression and such but nice it's a long and so you're, you're long. gonna do all the shows i think there's six shows this year you're gonna um, do all the gpa shows so far it was just the puyallup washington one okay. um, for the two days now this one and now we're in talks to going to um north carolina okay and i don't know if it's gonna happen yet like i recently hired um like a, a manager to help me kind of deal and negotiate because like i said like with ADHD and stuff, I say yes, 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 yes to everything Let's that's shiny, it. right? Yep. But I'm not paying attention to like um, the, the finances of it or anything. So I'll have someone to take care of that. Sure. So I don't know if I'm going to that one, but so yeah. far maybe just two or three. You have an agent, an a agent. manager, an agent, a manager. Yeah. Well, okay. I co he's like an assistant, I guess. Okay. Not an official manager, but. Is this Martin? That's yes, Martin. Okay, Martin's cool. I got to meet Martin, talk to Martin. Yeah, he's a good guy. Martin's like a wealth, like. Martin's a wealth of information. Cause yeah, he's been everywhere. Yeah. yeah, he's like he used to be a uh, security guard for actors in L.A. Oh wow! And I'm like, man, how old are you? Like, I thought he was like 30s or something. But he's, I won't, yeah, I won't say his age. Right. Then sorry, right. sorry. We'll leave Martin alone. But <laughs> we'll if, leave him alone. If you watch Pioneer Paul, and I'm definitely linking his channel down below. I'm gonna link Martin's too because Martin started a channel. I got to chat with him yesterday, and just like where, because I'm a young, we're a young channel. 6,000 subscribers, we've been doing it a year. This is the, like the first kind of interviews today I've done, yeah. uh, this podcast style, which I'm enjoying. But the wealth of knowledge, like, should I go on Facebook? Should you go on Absolutely. YouTube? And Martin was very helpful yeah. on that. Oh yeah, he, so. yeah, he's yeah he's good but yeah absolutely go on facebook and TikTok and just take advantage of that yeah i mean with TikTok, like i was avoiding it for a long time because i'm too. just like because you hear TikTok, you're like oh it's like just young kids and their funniness yeah well it kind of i almost feel like it uh like an hour of TikTok. i'm getting sucked in i gotta oh, go yeah. do something like those of you think youtube's bad you know when you watch a youtube video and you just go down this rabbit hole of videos and you're like, how did I end up here? Right. It's like a bus ride. You're right. like, you know, you're going on this field trip. You don't know where, but then you get off the bus. You're like, I'm sorry. Right. What did I do? <laughs> where would I end up? Right. TikTok is way worse. It is. But there's a huge, huge, huge audience on that. Sure. You know, and anything gold, anything treasure related, you're going to. Yeah, it's 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 my biggest platform out of all of them. Wow. Is TikTok. OK, so. And this may make it in the ending video or not, but monetization can yes. you monetize on all three um youtube facebook you can and TikTok? yeah especially if you're an american citizen in, in america you can okay in canada i can't monetize off tiktok yet interesting <clears throat> don't know okay. why all right same thing i don't know why i can't use a sluice box 
and I can use a dredge. I don't mm -hmm. understand. Okay, next question. I heard your campfire speaks. They were doing these campfire speaks. No real campfire. We're indoors. But uh, Pioneer got now. Pioneer Polly Polly got to speak, and uh, you had a near death experience. Yeah. I think people would be interested here. Yeah, no, about absolutely. Because so, you snipe a lot. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know what sniping is, it's like there's gold panning, you pan for gold on the river and such, and there's sluicing, you use a sluice box, you excavate, and then there's what's called gold sniping, or I don't know where that term came from, but it's you're in a wetsuit or a dry suit, and you're, you're floating in the river, um, working the bedrock cracks. Like gold, as you know, it's super heavy, right? It's gonna slide on that bedrock and it's gonna go down. And something the old time gold miners did was uh, avoid the water because it's cold and they didn't have the best, uh, lack of a better word, like uh, equipment for drying, you know? Like it'd be bad to go in, into the water and not like try to dry your stuff in a campfire when you're living in a cabin back in 1800s and such, right? So they just would avoid the water. But gold being heavy, we know that it's probably gonna, over millions of years, gonna sink towards in that water. Sure. So us gold snipers go in there and pick up the gold that was either missed or just pick up garbage or whatever was in there so anyways i started sniping a few years ago and looking for gold that's where my best gold nuggets have, have always come from it's not everyone's doing it <laughs> yeah yeah so not everyone's doing it so maybe i shouldn't even talk about it like, but no yeah get in a wetsuit and go and do it but i recently got my recently as a couple years ago got my scuba diving certificate and i only got i did ocean dives all that stuff to get my experience so i could like specifically go in this one river this one claim that i now have full access to sure to go look for gold nuggets at 20 feet opposed to three feet deep and the gold's amazing and all that and gold fever will make you do crazy things in fact you get you get so caught up in the fever that you you'll do like just make bad decisions and you'll you'll break bones you just got to be very careful but the two main rules about scuba diving is never scuba dive alone yeah. and never panic and like if we imagine like both of those happen to me like so if the river currents flowing this way I'm looking upstream. I'm wearing what's called a BCD. It's a buoyancy control device. And I'll deflate my BCD. I'll add extra weight so I'm nice and heavy. And there's a big pool way down behind me. So I would decide to wear fins this one day. And I don't normally wear fins because I want my, my feet to be nice and sticky and I can crawl and such. So I have this one day I had fins on. And I weigh myself down and I face toward the stream and I crawl down into the water like this and I get to the center of the river. Now the flow of the river is going over top of me and you don't want to stand up or you, you can't really stand up because the pressure is pushing you down. But now I'm seated, I'm still, um, you know, working away at the bedrock. And um, I normally do that then I get out. But this one time I was following, following a crack and then I was going down and uh, I was chasing this one crack and I found a little piece of gold. So I get my snuffer bottle and I suck it up. And then right away my, my snorkel flew out of my mouth and typically when that happens like you're trained to you know you lean sideways and grab your snorkel and you put it in your mouth or you can inflate your bcd and float but in my case i had way too much weight on me to begin with right or you can drop your weights you can you know there's tons of things to do but the number one thing that will allow you to do any of that is to stay calm sure so i was in the center of this river laying down there my my regulator shot out of my mouth how how deep was it Oh gosh, it was like maybe only nine feet, nine, okay. ten feet. But fast moving. Fast moving water. Like yeah. you stand up, I'm still underwater, right? Okay. And I'm weighing down. It's like someone's holding onto you. It's scary underwater. Sure. So the thing uh, leaves my mouth and I'm like, I, I start, I'm like, oh, oh no, this is bad. You hear the river water, you start to panic. So I stood up. And so now, the, you know, it hits you and you're kind of, you're starting to lose your, your control and you start to freak out and just knowing that I couldn't stand up and I was trying to run, I couldn't really do anything. So I started to really panic. I started to scream. I started to yell. And when Underwater. People, underwater. <laughs> I was just yelling. And it's like, I had so much trouble even for weeks talking about this. But now it's like, I talk about it so much. I'm like, I laugh about it now. Because it's just like typical me to go do something as stupid as that. So here I am trying, like struggling underwater. And I remember like when people say, my life flashed before my eyes. Like I never understood that. And I don't see it as a physical flash, but what it means, I guess, from my experience was like, I apologize to everybody I loved. It was like um, my fiance, you know, my mom, everybody. I apologized to everybody. And I like, I, we, you know, we talked and then they all accepted it. And then they, you know, they forgave me and everything was just like, yeah. everything was good. But in such a fast, fast moment, flash. it was like all that happened. And so now I'm like, okay. I accept it. I'm just relaxed, but my body's still fighting. Like, so I'm screaming, I'm yelling, but my mind's kind of like at ease now. 
like accepting it and it's just like that is what's traumatizing it's not the experience not falling or anything like that yeah it's literally that moment that you accept death that wow. is what's traumatizing so anyways wow. so i'm struggling and uh i remember at one point kicking both my feet and getting my right hand on a little bowl on the bedrock and over time millions of years when gravel rolls down the the river it will create these little potholes it's actually another place you could find some gold sure down there so i grabbed the the bowl right there and i remember getting myself out and then when i got out i was just like dry heaving i was throwing up i was panicking and i unzipped my whole vest and i hopped right back in the water and it just goes to show that you're not thinking okay. i wasn't thinking at all I went right back in the water you're treading water like you're you're trying to figure something out i go back out i start crying i start losing my stuff and i realized after i slowly came with it it took me weeks to actually get clear but i mean in that moment I was gripping on my snuffer bottle still. <laughs> I was still holding on to that one snuffer bottle. Wow. So that one piece of gold that I found that day, I still have it. And yes. It's still in a vial at home. And right. I don't know whether or not I should keep it or it's like a reminder or if it's a bad thing to keep. No, or... no I think it's a good thing to keep. It's a great story. But um, I mean, I've never had that. I've heard of that too. Everything yeah. flashed before your eyes and you, yeah, you ask for forgiveness. I'm sorry. And it all just happens and you're accepting And you death. just accept it. It's yeah. just, it's, it, it makes was, things the white light. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's, it was such a humbling experience too, because I take a lot of things for granted in my life. Like I'm like, even this the experience to meet you and the experience to see all these people and all this, all this love and compassion from all these supporters. It's just amazing. Right. And it's like, I, I think over time, when you get a lot of attention over time, it gets to your head. You just develop this ego. And I've always wanted to avoid getting an ego because it's like, it's not who I am. Yeah. I want to stay humble, right? And almost dying. When you come out of that and you get to see your family, you get to see your kids again. It's just like, it's just, it just, just shows you that you are so vulnerable and that Mother Nature doesn't care who you are. Sure. You know, and, and, you know, you have this one life and it's just so just so precious right so now everything's happy i'm always happy like if i'm i don't know it's just yeah you know it's i'm, I'm happy to talk about it. i don't mind having the trauma or the little ptsd from it because no. at least i'm alive and at least i can go and pass that on to somebody else yeah. and learn from it and sure. anyway you uh no no it's a, it's a fantastic story I, I got to hear that last week so i wanted to make sure yeah uh, the viewers got to see no, absolutely. it absolutely great story is that the only beanie you, what, is, do you, what do you guys call them in Canada? Tooks? We call them Tooks. I always get in trouble for that, but I'm going to continue to call them Tooks. Canada way. But this is the only Took um, that I have that's like this. I have okay. others that are like different colors and such, but this is the original one. Uh, I started wearing it just because like being in Canada, sometimes it's winter and it gets really cold. And I got this from like a, a thrift shop or something like that. Put it on for one video just to keep my head warm. and that video did well so i thought it was the toque i'm like this is a good luck toque this is probably what's making me do good yeah. so i wore it again and again and again and now it's become this recognizable thing where i'm dragging it with me to australia and all these ridiculous hot weather places and now it's like kind of a i have to wear it now it's like this regret but at the same time <laughs> it's mine it's like my little blanket that's funny all right blanket. you better not lose it no it's attached to my head yeah okay it's sewn to my all head right. Very good. <laughs> All right. So one th other thing you mentioned, and I've got a few stories. We're not going to get into them today. But when you become somewhat famous up there on the island, you said, you, what's your weirdest stalker story? I want to oh know. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, <clears throat> there's a, uh, there's so there's actually a few. Um, there's another platform called Snapchat. Yep. And Snapchat, for those of you who don't know, you could send pictures of anything to anyone. If you have their address and I like I knew this one person I was talking to this woman for a while nothing in particular just a fan like there are many female fans right and this one I would talk to for a long time and I would be chatting her up let's just call her let's just call her Amanda of all names right so we can reference this. hi Amanda hi Amanda <laughs> yeah so I'll be talking to Amanda for a while and like just like anybody else and and then this other person added me let's call her Rose right and so rose came in the picture and again another fan talking whatever then bam sends me an inappropriate photo right and i'm like oh it's flattering but no like i'm, I'm sorry you, you you know 10 metric but I can't be doing that this right. is for like engaging with fans i'm trying to do this yeah yeah that's the chance right and then oh i'm sorry i didn't mean to this for some all this excuses and such sure so then we can carry on meeting more people talking on snapchat instagram all that sort of stuff 
And then bam, another one from Rose. And I'm like, come on, Rose. I'm like, all right, no, like just delete. I'm like, I should have stopped the first time, but anyway, it got rid of it and I was done. And meanwhile, while all this is happening, I'm telling Amanda all this stuff, right? And now fast forward a little bit, Amanda's getting into prospecting. She's seen a lot of my videos. I inspire people. So she's getting inspired. Sure. And she's making this one video crushing rocks in this rock crusher. And I recognize this tattoo on her wrist. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice little rose on her wrist, right? Okay, right. I'm like, I recognize that tattoo. Who's that? Like, so, okay, I keep talking to her, I keep doing my thing, and I'm going along with it. And then I see this, um, the tattoo again, and I'm like, that is the same tattoo on this rose girl. It's the same person. Ooh. So this is <laughs> the one. And there's more since that time. So to explain it a little bit better, this one fan that I've been talking to for a long time was the stalker, but she made a separate account under a separate name to test the waters with me and yeah. send me stuff, right? And then I blocked her and got rid of her and then went back to being on this other account and talking with me. So I'm like, that's strange. Wow. Yeah. That's so, a good story. Uh, yeah. That's that a was, good stalker story. That's a good stalker right. story. That's one of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, what about you? Do, you, do you have any funny ones? No, I don't have any stalker stories. I have and sneaking in your house or anything. Like no, that? and I and I have I I'm a gold dealer, so we have gold. So I'm always worried. I always worried about the inventory, even like at the show or something like that. So yeah. for the record, all the gold lives in safety deposit boxes in banks. It's not in his house, yeah, not in his underwear drawer not in next the to the, yeah. the gun. <laughs> there's those two at the house. So anyway, there's a, there's a good security system, but yeah. I don't worry about that. But it, it, if you grow and whatever, you're going to get stalkers and that type of thing. Yeah, it happens. So you know, it's, it's gonna, flattering, but yeah, it's flattering, but then it goes a little too far and Hollywood yeah. movies are made of it and all yeah, that stuff. Have weird but, ones. Um, okay. So I noticed a progression in Polly's your networking or you're branching out. Cause I saw you with Todd yeah. on gold rush recently in his mm -hmm. kitchen, a little yeah, hanging banter out with Todd back Hoffman. and forth. Yeah, that was actually really funny because he was like giving it to you pretty good like, uh, he's, on your logo and all that. See, that's the thing. Like you meet. OK, that's the yeah. So when you're a presence like an influencer or like a famous person on a TV show or such, like there is a big difference normally what they're like on TV versus what they're like in person. I like to be the same person everywhere I go. Sure. I'm the same person everywhere. I, go. I screw up everywhere. Like it's just fun. It's a part of who I am. Right. And. Todd is one of those individuals on Gold Rush that a lot of people, the majority I would say, don't like him based off the stuff that he's done on TV. Sure. He is not like that in person. The reason Staged. why him and I get along, sure. you know, like I could literally go up to Todd Hoffman in public and pants him and he would just chase after me and do the same thing. Like he's just, he's just as fun. No, yeah. in the kitchen, I, it was, I, it was hilarious because it was like, yeah, he was he was bantering you pretty good. He's and making then, fun of me. And then, yeah, and then you gave you know you gave him back, especially you know what do you That's think late. that nugget weighs? Three hundred fifteen pounds. You know what do you think that <laughs> weighs? Three hundred fifteen pounds. They point to him anyway. Oh, yeah, it's so it, funny. It, was, it was hilarious. Um, yeah, but yeah, off the cuff. But anyway, on that subject, you're that's that's a step up. I think that's a progression. That's yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, I think so. It's I had never thought ever I'd be meeting this, even some of the YouTubers that I used to watch before I was getting into this. Sure. And now I'm hanging out with them. And then like subscribers would pass them or then I'm meeting people from like a Gold Rush show. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like it just, I went out with a guy, um, his name's Michael Einzinger from the band Incubus. Do you know yeah. Incubus? Yeah. With a guitar player. Yeah. I'm like, what? Like, why am I, I mean, I'm sharing a car with them. I'm going to like my gold claim to go hang out with this guy. Nice. Like you just never thought of that. All thanks to just filming yourself online. But right. I would consider that even though it seems like even meeting you, we're just hanging out as friends and stuff. Right. This is still a connection. This is, yes. this is still a step up in your game. Yes. It means that I know you now. It means that not saying like I'm so special and such, but it means you don't realize these stuff no, are happening. No, I asked you for this interview and I jumped on it. And yeah. Dad, can, Well, but my dad can attest he's behind the cameras, by the way. But, you know, we're a small channel. So like Pioneer Polly said, I can do a one on one interview. This is awesome. You know, this is yeah. like <laughs> the, I come to these shows to meet these connections and YouTube yeah. for us being smaller. It's great that someone with your YouTube presence and status says yeah Mike. I, st I still want us to be seen as everybody else yeah. like i don't like numbers to discourage or make people nervous they're just numbers they're just it's just like sometimes you'll do a video of by accident and it'll get a ton of attention sure and all of a sudden you're just like known as this big guy but it's like we're all the same we're all just living this life so, oh, so last question where do you see pioneer poly the channel you five years ten years Ah, that's I want to ask you past that. Yeah, 
I, if I'm scuba diving with a partner, maybe we can go past that. <laughs> then we'll go alone anymore. Um, good question. I like, ever since I was younger, I just wanted to entertain people. And you know, I just want to make people laugh. I want people to make people happy. Um, I didn't have the best upbringing. Like, I don't want to sound sappy like most people. Oh, my dad wasn't around or nothing, but sure. same thing goes for me. And everyone handles it a bit differently and stuff, right? But however I word it, I didn't have a good upbringing. And I just like, for me, like, I just want to let other people have upbringing. And that's why the kids, I've said in my other sessions here at the campfire days, um, kids hold a, such a strong place in my heart. I love kids. Like that's, I feel like that's a big reason why I'm here. Sure. That's another reason I don't talk about politics, religion, or anything that would separate anybody on the channel. Nice. So that anybody from any political side, any yep. race, anybody can come and enjoy what I have to bring. Right. So nice. that's, that's that. Yeah. But like I said, I want to entertain people and I want to entertain the most amount of people possible either at one time or, in, or over time. And the best way to do that is through platforms. So, you know, YouTube, Facebook, everyone's on their phone, everybody almost. And so I want to do either like a goal of mine is to either run my own TV show way like bigger than YouTube, but TV might not be it. Maybe it is YouTube, maybe yeah. YouTube, Facebook, that takes over TV. You yeah. know, there's a lot more people. It has for me. Well, exactly. Me too. So. However that looks like in five years, I just want to at least own my own. Like it's again, like it's like I already do, like I've already met my dream, but sure. I just want to scale. I just want to scale. Like yeah. I just want to have my own Netflix show. I want to make my own movies. I want to direct them. I want to act nice. in them. I want to do big like Ted talks. I want to stand in front of crowds and tell stories and just, I just want to be me and help people be them. If that makes sense. Nope. But it's a great answer. So in five years, Maybe my own movie, TV show. Um, I'm not even thinking about the numbers too. Just, yeah. I just want to meet people that inspired me and stuff. And sure, I don't know. I don't really have a direct answer. I guess just want to keep doing this. I think that's a good answer. I think that's a good answer. And we'll see. We'll, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And I know this won't we'll be the last time. Oh Paul, no! Oh. Paulie's on the Gold Blog because. Oh uh, no! I'll be back we'll definitely. Sure. And and I think uh, Martin said you're coming to the island sometime, right? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Yes, if you come, come to the island, then. I'll take you to some really good places. We can okay. do an interview out in the bush. I would love that. That'd be amazing. I would love to do a gold blog. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. On Vancouver there. Island. In fact, I'm going to hold you to it. Do it. Absolutely. Okay. You don't right. need to. Yeah, you're welcome to come anytime. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, Pioneer Polly, it's been, it's been real. It's been great. It's no, been it's awesome. It's been good, so, man. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. 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 You, you too. And so uh, I'm going to link Polly's channel down below along with his assistant, Martin, who hilarious as well and yeah i always try to find more gold than Polly, and hasn't been successful yet but it, he will he, he will. will he's committed he yeah. works harder than i do so okay good absolutely good yeah. and uh yeah we'll go from there so we'll sign off thanks for watching and uh one more thing one more thing, one more thing. yeah like share this video like and subscribe to this guy there you go. if you're watching this on facebook like it you know leave a comment what's your favorite part what questions would have you have asked Nice. Yeah, absolutely. All right. It's been a pleasure. It really has been. Thanks, Paul. Cool. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. All right. High five. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Take care, guys. See ya.